Fifth grade, chapter six, lesson one, addition with unlike denominators. Investigate, Hillary is making a tote bag for her friend. She uses half a yard of blue fabric and one fourth yard of red fabric. How much fabric does Hillary use? So first of all, they want us to find one half plus one fourth. So we took our fraction strips out and we got one whole, right? And then we got one half and we got one fourth. And then we um, put them up together. And we found out that one half plus one fourth was three fourths. And then so Hillary uses three fourths yard of fabric. Draw conclusions. Describe how you would determine what fraction strips all with the same denominator would fit exactly under one half plus one third. So we took out our what, guys? Our Fresh. one half strip and our one third, one -third strip. And we have found that we needed to find a common denominator or a common multiple between 2 and 3. And what did you guys find? Uh, 5 6. We found that 1 6 was the common denominator and it took how many of those pieces to five. fill up? 5. It, we found out that 5 6 made up 1 half plus 1 third. Um, Explain the difference between finding fraction strips with the same denominator for one half plus one third and one half plus one fourth. So with one half and one third, we had to do what? We had to change both denominators. We had to change both denominators. But with one half and one fourth, we only had to change the, two, the two, one two. denominator because two can go into four. four. So we came up with a common denominator of four. Make connections. Sometimes the sum of two fractions is greater than one. When adding fractions with unlike denominators, you can use the one whole strip to determine if the sum is greater than one or less than one. Use fraction strips to solve three fifths plus one half. Step one, work with another student. Place three one fifth fraction strips under the whole strip on your math board. Then place the half fraction strip beside the three one fifth strips. Okay, so you should have done that. And then what did we say we found out? That the third fifth goes over like a little bit. A little bit, little bit, right? Okay, step two, find fraction strips all with the same denominator that are equivalent to three fifths and one half. Place the fraction strips under the sum at the right. Draw a picture of the model and write the equivalent fractions. Okay, so you guys got out your one tenth, right? Because you decided that a common multiple between five and two was ten. So you got out your one tenth pieces. And then how many one tenth pieces did it take to make three fifths? Six. Six. What? Six. Tenths. And then how many one tenth pieces did it take to make up the one half? Five tenths. Five tenths. Step three, add the fractions with the like denominators. Use the one whole strip to rename the sum in simplest form. So we said that three fifths was also six tenths. And then we said that one half was five tenths. So six plus five is what, guys? Eleven. Eleven. And your denominator does <coughs> not change. It would not be eleven twentieths. Okay? It is eleven tenths. You do not change your denominator unless you're coming up with a common denominator, okay? So, once we did this, how many whole bars do you have? One. One. And then how many would have went over the whole bar? How many tenths? And one, one and one tenth. tenth. One tenth. So one and one tenth. So basically when you have a whole number and you have a fraction, like that little space right between them kind of says the word and, okay? So one and one tenth. Share and show. Use fraction strips to find the sum. Write your answer in simplest form. So you were supposed to go ahead and do your red bar with your half and your one eighth size pieces. And then we decided that a common denominator would be what, guys? Eight. Eight, right? So we needed to change the one half. So how many one eighth size pieces were in one half? Four okay, so four eighths. And then we didn't have to change the three eighths, right? So that would have stayed the same. So plus three eighths equals 
equals seven eighths. Seven eighths is what you should have gotten. So now they have one half plus two fifths. And you guys said you laid out your red piece, and then you laid out your half pieces, and you laid out your one fifth pieces. And you guys decided that you would need to change both denominators, right? Mm -hmm. And you decided that what would work best? Mm -hmm. Tenths, right? So how many tenth size pieces made up one half? Nine, or five. Five, right? So five tenths. And then how many tenth size pieces made up two fifths? Four. Four tenths equals nine tenths. Ten. Nine tenths. Use fraction strips to find the sum. Write your answer in simplest form. So, you guys did your whole strip and then you did one, um, three one eighth pieces and you did one one fourth piece. Do, do you have to change both denominators? No. No, what stayed the same? No. The eighths, eight. right? So, three eighths stayed the same. And then what do you have to change one fourth to? Two eighths. Two eighths. So three plus two is um, five. And then I told you guys your denominator does not change. So your answer is five eighths. Five eighths. Okay. Now on the next one, did you have to come up with a new denominator for three fourths and one third? Yes. Yes. What was your new denominator? You used 12, right? So you should have changed them into 12 size pieces. So how many 12 size pieces were in 3 fourths? 4. Okay. 9. 9. So this would have been 9 twelfths. And then how many would have been in 1 third? 4. So 4 twelfths. 9 plus 4 is what? 13 twelfths. But they want this in simplest form, and that's an improper fraction. So that is that in simplest form. No. Now, how many times does 12 go into 13? Once. And what is 13 minus 12? One. One. And then I told you, your denominator never changes. So your answer is? One in one twelfth. One in one twelfth. So use fraction strips to find this up. Write your answer in simplest form. So, like I just said, we're going to uh, do a little uh, multiplication to actually get our common denominators this time, okay? So, it'll be what you see eventually. We're just going to kind of speed up the process a bit, okay? Now, 2 fifths plus 3 tenths. Do you guys think both of those denominators need to change or only one? Only one. Only one, okay? So, which one are we going to change, the 2 fifths or the 3 tenths? <laughs> 2 fifths. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to put a multiplication sign, and we know we want to get to what? 10, right? Is our common denominator. So how did I get from 5 to 10? Times 2. So what I do on the bottom, I do on the top. 2 times 2 is 4. So my new fraction for 2 fifths is 4 tenths. And then did I change three tenths? No. No. So that equals what? Seven tenths. Seven tenths. One fourth plus one twelfth. Do I need to change both denominators or only one? One. Mm -hmm. Only one. So what am I going to change it to? Twelve, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put 1 12th because I'm not changing that one, right? All I'm changing is the 1 4th. So we said that my new denominator was going to be 12. So what times 4 gets me 12? 3. 3. So what I do on the bottom, I do on the top. So 1 times 3 is 3. three. So I'm going to write 3 12 down here in place of my 1 4. What is 3 plus 1? 4. And then I told you we do not change our denominator now, but 4 twelfths can also be reduced. It is not in simplest form. What number goes into 4 and 12? 4 goes into 4 and 12, right? How many times does 4 go into 4? Once. Once. And how many times does 4 go into 12? 3. 3 times. So the answer is 1 third. 
one half plus one or plus three tenths. So am I going to change both denominators or just one? One. One. Okay, what is my new denominator going to be? Ten. Ten. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite three tenths. And then we said this is going to have to become a ten. So what, how did I get from two to ten? Times five. So what I do on the bottom, I also do on the top. So one times five is? Five. Five. So five tenths plus Three tenths equals eight tenths. Eight tenths. Now, is that my simplest form? No. no, because they're both even numbers. So we know at least the number two goes in there. There could be another number, but we for sure know at least the number two. So we know we at least need to reduce one half. So how many times does two go into eight? Four, four. four times. And four, or two into ten? Five. Five. So our answer is four fifths. Four fifths. <coughs> All right, I have two thirds plus one sixth. Do both denominators need to change or just one? Just one. What are we going to change our denominators to be? Six. Six. So I can go ahead and rewrite one sixth, and I need to change two thirds. So we said six. How do I get from three to six? Mm -hmm. Times two. So, 2 times 2 is 4. four. So, my new fraction is 4 6 plus 1 6 equals 5 6. Five, six. Five eighths plus 1 4. Do I need to change both denominators or just one? Just one. Okay, what's my new denominator going to be? Eight. 8. So, I can go ahead and rewrite 5 8. And then we said we need to change the second one to an 8. How did I get from 4 to 8? Times 2. Times 2. So what I do on the bottom, I do on the top. 1 times 2 is 2. So my new fraction is 2 eighths. So 5 eighths plus 2 eighths is 7 eighths. 7 eighths. Now we have 1 half plus 1 fifth. Do I need to only change one denominator or two? Two. Two. What is going to be my new common multiple, my new common multiple <coughs> or new common denominator? Ten. ten. Okay. So we know that this is going to be a ten plus something over a ten. So I need to change both sides, right? How did I get from two to ten? Times five. Times five. So what I do on the bottom, I have to also do on the top. So 1 times 5 is 5. So my new fraction for there is 5 tenths. Now we need to change 1 fifth. How did I get from 5 to 10? Which times 2. What I do on the bottom, I also have to do on the top. top. So 2 times 1 is 2. So my new fraction for 1 fifth is 2 tenths. So 5 tenths plus 2 tenths equals 7 tenths. Seven tenths. So 3 fourths plus 1 sixth. So what, we want a least common multiple, right? I told you guys to find a common multiple, and a lot of those you just have been multiplying, like 2 times 5 got you 10, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, if you did 4 times 6, that would get you 24, but there is a smaller multiple than 24. What is it? 24. 12. So we know for each one of these, our new denominator will be 12. So what would I take 4 times? 3. Times 3. What I do on the bottom, I do on the top. So 3 times 3 is 9. So my new fraction is 9 twelfths. What do I take times 6 to get to 12? 2. 2. So what I do on the bottom, I do on the top. So 2 times 1 is 2. So 9 plus 2 is 11 twelfths will be my answer for that one because 3 fourths when it became 9 twelfths, 1 sixth became 2 twelfths, and 9 plus 2 is 11 twelfths.